Search continues for an Opelousas woman who's been missing for more than two years. After today, Opelousas police say they're going to continue treating this as a missing persons case. On how the remains of an Opelousas woman were identified. Seven years wondering who murdered their loved one, Erica Hunt. Hunt. Just it will be safe. Just a quick warning. This video will contain explicit content. The video will tell some gruesome details about murder victims and crimes committed by a very disturbed individual. This is not a topic that can be treaded lightly, and as such, viewer discretion is advised. Hi everyone, it's Lady Curious with another true crime. I know it's been a while since I have made a video. In this video, I try to get as much details as I could there's not much and it's kind of infuriating. Remember, this video is for educational and documentary purposes only. Please be nice in the comments. You never know if a family member is down below reading everything. If there is any hate at all, I will delete your comment. I have been sort of feeling like I wasn't ready to do this case. Because I feel like there's so much more of it. Or there should be more information. It's not a deep dive. It's very to the point. I even reached out to the family to ask if they could tell me more about this beautiful woman and what happened to her. They read my message, but they never responded. I don't know if they just don't want to be dealing with anyone on YouTube or true crime. And I will respect that, and I understand. Today's case will be about a young lady named Erica Hunt. This happened in 2016. I want to kind of tell y'all who Erica was and what I could find about Erica and what I perceive from the pictures of who she may have been. Her name is Erica Nicole Hunt. She was only 21 years old from Opelousa, Louisiana. She is 5'2", pretty short. I'm 4'11", like me. And she was medium build. She has short brown hair and brown eyes. She had three tattoos, Nicole on her lower back, Brianna on her right arm. Brianna is her little daughter. And a Care Bear on her left shoulder. And Brianna was only two when Erica went missing in 2016. Erica's sister describes her as lively, energetic, and kind of like a firecracker of the family. She was always smiling and she just loved being around family and friends. They said she was type of person who got along with everyone. She would even run around and like take people's phones and take silly pictures and everything and then hand your phone back and then you know you'd get that surprise of her um, putting a lot of pictures of herself in your phone. She loved to smile and lift moods of everyone. She was known for infectious laughter and big smile. I tried to see if I could find some videos of Erica, but there really wasn't any. There was a couple of her filming other people, but I couldn't find any of her being filmed. She was a mother, and she was just looking forward to her 21st birthday that was coming up soon. Everyone said that she was a loving sister, daughter, and friend. Erica was last seen on July 4th, 2016, behind Ray's Bowden Restaurant Grocery. A Bowden is a type of sausage that's very popular in Louisiana. This case begins on July 3rd. Since everyone was working and everyone, you know, has crazy type of schedule, the family decided to get together and celebrate July 4th on July 3rd. Erica's uncle hosted a family get-together celebration at his house. Erica seemed to be having a good time. And all of her family said she seemed like she was having a good time. She talked about plans for her 21st birthday party and applying for public housing. At this time, Erica didn't really, they didn't really talk about her job, but I think she was out of a job at the moment. But she was looking for employment. She lived with a roommate and she always took good care of her daughter. She loved her to the moon and back. You can tell that 
She was a very good mother and she wanted the best for her kid and the best for herself. She seemed like she was ready to take on the world. It seemed like her life was going well and she was looking forward to the future. Her mother, Shannon Isaac, remembers the last thing she heard Erica talking about was a plan to go to Lake Charles the next day with a friend who has a child as well. It was just a good day for our family, Erica's sister told Dateline. Everyone was just hanging out and having a good time. Erica seemed to be enjoying herself as she gushed about plans for her birthday and working towards moving into a new house. Erica was also supposed to braid her friend's daughter's hair the next day. And when she didn't show up, her friend grew concerned. She said Erica's roommate hadn't seen her either, so they all started calling her phone. But it just rang and rang and rang. Then it would just go straight to voicemail. Something wasn't right. Her sister said that in the past, even if Erica ran out of minutes on her phone, or if the battery died, she always found a way to call her family, especially to check on her daughter. On the morning of July 4th, Erica briefly visited the home of her sister and brother-in-law, Jordan Barnes. She borrowed a few dollars for some cigarettes and then left. She didn't ask for a ride as she usually did. Neither her sister nor Jordan knew which direction she walked after she left or if she was picked up by someone in a car. After she left her sister, she was last seen behind that restaurant between 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. by an unknown source. I think it was just word of mouth that someone saw her. The whole point to this is that Erica, on July 3rd, left her daughter with her mother, you know, so she can have some grandma time. And her mother watched her daughter until July 4th because Erica was supposed to go back to her mom's house and pick up her daughter and get to Lake Charles with a friend. But she never came to pick up her daughter. And then she never went to the lake. No one has seen her. She never went and braided that friend's daughter's hair. All the plans that she had on July 4th she never did, but people said that she stopped by her sister's house to get some money to go get some cigarettes, and that's the last time anyone saw her. Also, on July 4th, she left a status on her Facebook at 12.59 p.m. It says, Excuse our hitness, but screaming happy birthday from my bed, from my bed where I can't seem to get out of to wherever she's located. Happy birthday, Kaya Janae. Let's turn the F up. And so she was kind of like giving a shout out to her really good friend on Facebook. And she said that she's at 12.59 p.m. at home, okay? But before that, she supposedly, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense, the timing. Because supposedly before she was seen at the gas station, she went to her sister's to get the cigarettes. And then she was seen at the gas station. And then maybe she went home. And then that's when she made this post. That's the last time anyone ever heard from Erica again. Anyone. Her daughter, her sister, her mother, her friends. Never heard from this beautiful, sweet girl ever again. And it seemed like she was so loved. Had so much family and friends. All the pictures. All of the videos that I've seen. She just seemed lively and seemed like she wanted to capture the moment, all the moments. She had such a beautiful smile and the dimples that she had were just so beautiful. And just, yes, her smile is infectious. Well, Erica's family filed a missing persons report with the police on July 6, 2016. Although the report was filed on the 6th, Jordan Barnes, Erica's brother-in-law, and one of the last people to see her said that police did not come interview him until a month later. The police department have not issued any comments regarding Mr. Barnes' claims, so we don't know if that's true or not. Erica's mother said her daughter had a history of using marijuana, but didn't think her disappearance was drug-related. If law enforcement knew this, maybe they wrote her off. I'm not saying that's what happened here, but it's certainly known the fact that different circumstances can have a bearing on how a missing person's case or any other are treated, especially women of color. I'm throwing that out there right now. They've gotten a lot better in some cities, 
It's just not fair. It's not fair. Um, regardless of any drugs Erica may have done, the family said she wasn't on any hard drugs or anything like that. That wasn't who Erica was. Searches were organized and flyers were plastered all over the community, but there was no trace of Erica. Her sister said Erica's wallet with ID was left behind, but her cell phone has never been found. To me, that is weird. Why would you leave her ID and everything behind, but her cell phone wasn't found? If she was out somewhere, she would have brought her ID and her money and all that kind of stuff. Her sister also said, and we were close as sisters could be. I mean, of course, we fought like crazy, but we could be arguing. And then if something happened and I needed her, it didn't matter. She would be right by my side to help me. That's who Erica was. Her sister told Dateline, the case was passed along through the police department over the years and has since hit a dead end. Chief McClelland said they have followed every tip and lead that has come in over the past four years, but nothing has led to Erica. This is still considering an outstanding missing persons case, and we invite anyone with any information to contact us. The police chief said this young lady deserves to be returned to her family. Police chief confirmed that while there are no suspects in Erica's disappearance, authorities are concerned for her safety. We're not at liberty to discuss this case, so I will not go any further, but I'm telling you something is going to happen. Police chief McLendon stated her living in vain and somebody is going to answer for what happened to her. Erica would be 24 years old today. Her sister said it was like night and day that weekend. One day she was there and everything was going good and the next she was gone. It was just unbelievable and it still is. It was just all so hard to process. Her sister said Brianna asked for her but we didn't know what to say. She was so young and it was all so overwhelming. We have little information and haven't heard anything in a while. And by little I mean nothing at all. Just any bit of information would help. Erica's mother and sister both express it that they would just like closure, but know that closure might mean Erica is no longer alive. It's heartbreaking, but we haven't given up, her sister said. The family advocates for Erica's safe return with the Facebook page, Bring Erica Hunt Home. And the hashtags, Bring Erica Home, Justice for Erica, and What Happened to Erica Hunt. Signs with Erica's photo and information decorate hundreds of yards and opalosis. As the community strives to keep hope alive, we've been living a nightmare these past few years, Erica's sister said. But we're trying to stay strong. We're not giving up until we bring Erica home. The chief stated that they had a tip in 2018 that Erica's remains were possibly in a house on Hirsch Alley. They searched this house. They even brought in cadaver dogs to see if they smelled any human remains, but nothing was found in that house. That tip was a dead end, but around that same time in December of 2018, a little boy named Bryson was missing, and as they were searching for this little boy, unfortunately they came across some skeletal remains found in Eveline Parish. It was just skeletal remains. They didn't know who they belonged to. They were found near Ville Plot at the time, but not identified until two years later through the efforts of the Louisiana State Police Crime Lab, the LSU Forensic Anthropology and Computer, Computer Enhancement Services Laboratory, and the DNA Doe Project, because for two years, the skeletal remains they found were a doe. Finally, on February 5th, 2021, y'all, not even two years ago, they announced they were able to firm a forensic match to Erica Hunt. The Louisiana State Police are investigating Erica's death as a homicide with the assistance from the Eveline Parish Sheriff's Office. The family is pleading for justice. They hope to reunite the cold case of Erica Hunt with a candlelight vigil. The family of Erica is just now receiving her remains almost five years after she went missing, two years after her remains were discovered. We prayed, and we asked God to please bring her home. 
now her remains are home. We can give her a proper burial, but now we still need justice for Erica, exclaimed Miranda Isaac, one of Erica's aunts, to a crowd of about a hundred people, all in attendance, for one purpose, Friday night. It was like that the last time her whole family came together July 3rd, 2016, the day before she went missing. Her uncle Tyrone Glover remembered. It was troubling. A lot of people wanted to give up. A lot. They just thought she went on a joyride and wasn't going to come back. Those rumors were just put aside whenever I spoke to Miranda. We just kept hope alive and thank God, thank God they found her remains. Now we can properly put her to rest the right way. The family can have some closure, but it isn't over. It isn't over because somebody did it to her. Erica Hunt was murdered. No one saw nothing. No one has came forward. It is an ongoing investigation. An ongoing. The person who did it is still out there running around freely. I want y'all to remember that she has a two-year-old daughter. And it stated that she started calling her aunt mommy. Her aunt said that she was a rambunctious child. Lots of energy. And after this happened, she became a much quieter child. Erica has a mother who misses her smile and can't imagine anyone wanting to hurt her daughter. A family is left lashing out in anger and despair. Shannon. Isaac hopes family members don't begin lashing out at each other as more days without answers go by. Who killed Erica? Who killed Erica? If anyone has any information, please come forward to the police. Please call Crime Stoppers. You can even do it completely anonymously. Have you heard anybody talking about weird stuff about Erica or someone that has talked to you and hinted at like achieving something that they were excited about that meant harming someone else? That could be a lead. Anything, anything so small could break a case open. Authorities say the investigation relies on tips from the public and gave reassurance that just as the family won't give up on justice for Erica, neither will they. Erica's hunt's death is being investigated as a homicide by state police, and they're asking for more information, guys. Anything could be a very small piece that you think it's insignificant that the investigators say it might be the little tiny missing piece that they need. If you have any information about Erica Hunt's disappearance or death, call Crime Stoppers 948-8477-TIPS. I will leave the information down in the description. Now, I want to talk about this case for myself. There are just so many holes in this case. But when I saw this case, and I saw that it was not getting enough public reach. I wanted to help. I wanted to help somehow. This young girl did not deserve what happened to her whatsoever. She was living her life. She had plans the next day. She loved to braid hair. She even did it on the side for money. You can tell she was a sweet woman and silly. You should see some of the pictures. And she loved her daughter so much. I think she might have had a partner or did have a partner. I think it was the daughter's father, but I don't know what type of relationship they were in when she went missing. But it didn't say anything about him, so I'm guessing he wasn't involved at all. It was like she just went to the store, made that last Facebook post, and just disappeared. I mean, my theory is that either maybe someone came to her house and knocked on the door, and you know, when you go to the door, you have your phone in your hand, or... You're, you go outside and you're talking to someone and you got your phone in your hand and you're just bullshitting on the porch and stuff, but you don't bring your wallet with you because you're not really wanting to leave your house. Maybe someone hurt her in her house. 
or outside of her house and then they took her or maybe they said hey come sit in my car for a minute and talk and they just drove away with her something happened and someone had to see something you know a lot of people they got nosy neighbors or they got people that sit out on the porch and chill and you know drink their tea or their beer or whatever and it was fourth of july so there was probably a lot of people outside and i just feel like no one's talking and i'm heartbroken for this family i'm very happy that erica is home for her to be completely at rest i feel that i hope that they find out who did this to her that little girl needed her mommy and someone took that away from her in a blink of an eye and that breaks my heart to her family i'm very sorry for what y'all have gone through i'm very sorry that you lost such a beautiful light in your life and i pray that you heal very quickly and my thoughts and prayers are with y'all and i will be keeping track of this case if anything does come up in the case you know like they found the person who did it i will come back and maybe do like a little video or leave a comment down below stating you know who it was and all of that i'm praying that they find something or someone starts to feel guilty about what they did or maybe they're already in prison and it wouldn't matter if they said oh yeah i i killed that girl too just give this woman some justice give the family some justice please come forward if you know anything about erica and what happened to her i know this video is a little different than what i normally do i don't really usually do videos that are cold cases or that are not solved but i wanted to get this woman's story out to everyone i know i'm a really small youtuber but anything can help anything share it like subscribe link it do tiktoks with it anything you can to get erica's story out there and maybe someone will have a conscious and tell police something i love y'all so much i will be back soon i'm hoping at the end of this month beginning of next I do have uh, chronic illnesses, and sometimes it takes me a little bit longer to make videos. It just depends on how my month or weeks are. Please stay safe, everyone. Please watch your backs. You never know who's out there and who will just take you. Just how Erica was took from this world. I love y'all so much. Until next time, stay safe. We begin tonight in St. Landry Parish, where an Opelousas family will be holding a memorial service for their loved one after she went missing back in 2016. News 10's Zane Hogue joins us to find out how the family of Erica Hunt wants to keep her name alive. This is a story you'll see only on 10. Here in Opelousas, the family of Erica Hunt is looking for closure as they lay her remains to rest almost seven years after Hunt's disappearance. <laughs> so it touched her heart. It hurts. It hurts that, you know, she didn't deserve this, no matter what she was doing on the street. Hunt went missing on July 4th, 2016, after telling family members she was going to pick up food. The case would remain cold until December of 2018, when her remains were discovered in Villeplatt. The remains were sent to a DNA lab where they were confirmed to be Hunt's in 2021. And from that day on, it's just been heartbreaking each and every day. It's a struggle. They finally released the remains to the family but also bring awareness to the community, to different states, different things is going on in our world. Relatives of Hunt believe the burial of her remains can not only provide closure to the family, but also carry on her legacy, showing that justice needs to be found for her family and other families experiencing the same type of loss. We thank God that it's going to give the family some closure that we can lay her to rest properly because of how this thing transpired and where her body was found and the way it was found. So this gives some closure, but this isn't the end. So we want to keep her name alive. Isaac says they can keep Erica's name alive by continuing to tell her story and pushing for any information to be brought to law enforcement. To keep her legacy, her story alive until we find justice for her. Putting our flowers, more flowers, more signage in, um, in our neighbor's yards. Anything to so the public don't forget about her. Because she do have a daughter. Yes. Her daughter was at the age of two. She don't remember her mom. 
to keep it all alive, to keep her picture out there, you know, and to ask the public for help because we need help. We can't do this by ourselves. Hunt's memorial service is currently scheduled for March 18th, and her family is pleading to anyone with information about her death to step forward. In St. Landry Parish, the remains of an Opelousas woman were finally put to rest today. As News 10's Dawson D'Amico reports, Erica Hunt went missing in 2016, and her remains were discovered two years later. Today, Hunt's family were finally able to give her a proper goodbye. Erica Nicole Hunt went missing in July of 2016. Her remains were later found two years later. And today, her family is finally able to put Hunt to rest as the search for who is responsible continues. The last time Hunt was seen by her family was the weekend of July 4th, 2016 at a family gathering in Opelousas. Two years later, in December of 2018, remains were found near Vilplatt. In 2021, investigators were able to identify those remains as belonging to Hunt. That is when her missing persons case turned into a homicide investigation led by the state police with the help of Evangeline Parish Sheriff's Office and Opelousas Police. Her remains were held in a DNA lab for years until finally being brought back to the family so they can have a proper memorial for the life she lived. It was a good feeling, even though we still haven't got justice yet, but it was a good feeling to put, a, to, uh, put a remains to rest. Hunt was a contributing member of the Opelousas community. She worked as a hairdresser and a loving mother to her daughter. Hunt's family and friends put this memorial together to remember her and find answers to what happened to their loved one. Well, we need some answers, and that's all we're asking for, some answers. Just like you say, justice for Erica. So this is what this is all about. It's hard, but we need the community help as well, because we can't do it by ourselves, not at all. Opelousas community leader and Hunt's uncle, Tyrone Glover, helped set the memorial up. He says this is important for Hunt's family to be able to get some form of closure they have wanted since they lost Hunt. It's a beautiful soul that we lost. You understand, Erica, beautiful daughter of hers, her grandmother passed away, but her family members standing strong. They're standing behind me and on the side of me. They're standing strong. This is a sad day, but it's a beautiful day. In Opelousas, Dawson D'Amico, KLFY, News 10. Hunt's cause of death has not yet been released. If you have any information about her disappearance, you're asked to contact law enforcement. Jealousy is such a strange enemy, I know It's all in my head, but I can see It's standing in doorways down the street 